Hey, what is up guys? It's Super User Stan here, back with another video. And in this one, I wanna talk about the specs of the Canon EOS R5 camera. Uh, the official specs, what we can reasonably predict based off of the 1DX Mark III, some of the white paper information. I'll put it all together and try to come up with a conclusion for you guys. And I'm gonna be throwing a lot of numbers at you and I'm gonna be trying to keep it as simple as possible. So if you need to rewind or you need to pause at any moment, feel free to do so. Let's get into it. So officially, what do we already know? Well, Canon said that the R5 is gonna be able to do 12 frames per second mechanically, 20 frames per second with the shutter up. It's gonna be able to shoot 8K video and it's gonna be able to do IBIS or in-body stabilization. So those three things are pretty amazing already. Now, uh, what they didn't say was the codec, the resolution, the crop factor, all that stuff. So we'll try to dig a little bit deeper and come up with our own predictions. The One DX Mark III is Canon's latest and greatest, and it's uh, it was announced about four months back, and it's finally hitting the shelves right about now. So the hardware in the One DX Mark III is going to be very similar to the EOS R5, or at least. I think it's reasonable to say that it's gonna be very similar. So the Digic 10 processor, the brand new processor for the 1DX Mark III, is probably gonna be the exact same processor that we're gonna see in the R5. Now, assuming that it's the same processor, we can take a look at the bandwidths and the capabilities of the uh, 1DX Mark III and then translate that over to the R5. The first thing we can talk about is the resolution of the sensor. Now, we know that it's gonna be full frame, but we don't know how many pixels it's gonna be. So there's been some uh, rumors of 45 megapixels. There's some other claims of 40 megapixels. Let's take this apart and dig a little bit deeper. Since this camera is a 8K UHD camera, uh, we know that that resolution is already 768 by 4320, which is approximately 33.2 megapixels. Now the dimension of UHD is 16 by nine. Now, if we take a step back and take a look at the DCI dimension of 1.9 to 1, uh, that resolution is going to be closer to a 8192 by 4320, which is approximately 35 megapixels or 35.4 megapixels. Now, if we take the 8192 and change that to a 3 by 2 layout, which is basically uh, the full frame dimension, we get a full dimension of 8192 by 5461, which is 44.7 megapixels. That 44.7 megapixels plus a little bit of margin is right on 45 megapixels. Uh, that's, that's pretty much um, what all of the rumors are suggesting. Now, what this means is Canon deliberately scaled the entire sensor to the 8K resolution size. What this also means is that a one-to-one -one readout of the sensor to 8K is gonna have a very minimal cropping, which is a great thing. With the sensor resolution established, let's talk about the frame rate in codecs that we can expect from the 8K recording. So if we take a look at the uh, 1DX Mark III white paper, we can see that it has a five and a half K raw output at 60p. So that specific codec is about 2,600 megabits per second. Now, since we assume that the processor is the same Digic 10 processor out of the 1DX Mark III, we know that this processor is able to handle 5.5K, which is 5472 by 2886 at 60 frames a second, which translates out to be 900 47 million pixels per second. Now I know this isn't a normal metric, but I, we can at least say that this processor could do 947 million pixels a second. If we take 8K UHD uh, resolution 768 by 4320 and multiply by 30 frames every second, we get a total number of 995 million pixels every second. That 995 is actually very similar or very close to that 947 number uh, within a few percentage points actually if we take another look at the dci resolution of the 1.9 to 1 then we're at 8192 times 4320 times 30 which is 1061 million pixels a second 1061 995 they're all both numbers are actually very close to that 
947 million pixels a second. So I think that we're gonna be seeing at least 8K30 raw at 2600 megabits per second as the codec. Um, that is almost guaranteed because the number of pixels, the capability of the camera, um, it's there. So there really shouldn't be any hardware limitations for that. Now, if Canon says, ah, we don't wanna give you raw, well, that's a different story, but at least the hardware is capable of it. Now, with that said, 8K60, uh, that's just not gonna happen because you're doubling the number of pixels, the doubling the number of bandwidth. Uh, if, if 8K30 is 2,600 megabits per second, that 8K60 is gonna be uh, 52 megabits per 5200 megabits per second uh, that you're pushing you're gonna be pushing close to 7 650 680 almost 700 megabytes per second well that's within the uh, within the theoretical limit of CF Express I don't think it's happening at least not in the first iteration all right now let's talk about non raw recording so if we take a look at the 1dx mark 3, it's able to do H.265 10-bit 422 uh, at 60p uncropped. And it's also able to do 420 at 8-bit H.264 uncropped. And both DCI uncropped, 4K UHD uncropped. The way it's able to do that is it takes the full sensor readout, or give or take a little bit of the margins, of course, take, takes that full sensor readout and then downscales that to 4K. All right, so here's where a little bit of the guesswork comes in because the 1DX Mark III essentially takes the full frame sensor readout, chops the top and bottom to get you the 19 by 10 DCI output, then uh, chops the ends off to get you UHD 16 by 9, and that UHD resolution is 5130 by 2886, which is effectively 18, or sorry, 14.8 megapixels. Then it takes that 14.8 megapixels and downscales that to 4K UHD, which is 8.3 megapixels. Uh, you're getting all that extra data squeezed into a 4K resolution. You're getting all that extra detail and everything, but you're also getting a huge load on the processor to make that shrink down. Now, if we take a look at the R5 on the other hand, assuming that you start out with a 44.7 megapixel sensor, uh, you end up with a UHD dimension 16x9 of 8192 by 4608 which is 37.7 megapixels. Uh, when you oversample that and straight that down to 8K UHD uh, which is 33.2 megapixels uh, you're really talking about a delta of something close to 4.5 megapixels. So the shrinking is really actually not that extreme. Now, can the processor handle that? Maybe. Will Canon choose to do this? Maybe. Even if they choose to use a one-to-one -one pixel readout, uh, you're looking at the difference between the yellow and the green area. The green area being one-to-one -one 8K. And a, the green area compared to the yellow area, you're looking at a decrease of 94% on the length and a 93% decrease on the height, or effectively something close to a 1 to 1.1 times crop. 1.1 times crop is not nearly as bad as uh, some of the other crops that we have seen, especially on the EOS R, which is over 1.7, close to 1.8 times crop, uh, 4K crop. Uh, bare minimum, we've got a very small amount of crop. In the best case scenario, there's not gonna be a crop at all. So I think it's gonna be very interesting to see AK30 RAW as well as AK30 MP4, H.264, H.265 coming from this camera with a very little crop. The 1DX Mark III is able to do 422 10-bit at H.265 with Canon Log, or if you don't want Canon Log, it's able to do 420 at 8-bit at H.264. I'm also predicting that we're gonna be able to see H.265 10-bit 422 if Canon feels generous. Uh, at bare minimum, we're gonna get H.264 420 8-bit uh, as we have on the old EOS R's and basically all the other cameras. If re Canon really wants to be competitive, like I said, we're gonna be able to see that H.265 10-bit. 10-bit 8K is gonna be amazing. That's kind of really where we wanna be with the R5, 10-bit and C-Log and whatever. Now, while we're talking about codecs here, let's talk about bit rates. So uh, we could take a look at the table here. These are the 1DX Mark III 
codecs and bit rates. The IPB for 4K on the 1DX Mark II is about 120 megabits per second. 8K is literally four times the data rate, so we're gonna be looking at 480 megabits per second for IPB, uh, 30 frames per second on 8K. What it also means is that, or, and, and, and granted, this is H.264. Now, if we're lucky enough to get 10-bit H.265, uh, IPB, uh, IPB 4K is going to be about 170 megabits per second. Uh, 8K is going to be something close to 680 megabits per second for H.265 10-bit. Uh, that's a lot of data, but that's probably, that's not too bad considering if we're, you know, you're talking about 8K here. All that discussion was assuming dual CF Express cards and, uh, you know, dual SD cards, probably isn't going to happen. Uh, if you're doing 2,600 megabits per second, uh, that's about 325 megabytes per second, and you need to be able to constantly write that to the cards. A UHS-2 SD card is uh, has a theoretical limit of like 312 megabytes per second, so that's not going to work. And unless it deploys UHS-3, which is brand new, I haven't seen any UHS-3 cards out, to be honest. Uh, but that's a theoretical limit of 600. UHS-3 is possible, but you know, CF Express 2 or CF Express is already out. The 1DX Mark III already has dual CF Express. I think they're just going to be copying that over from the 1DX Mark III. You know, you know the same assembly, same new card reader, or whatever and just save on cost. That's probably the simpler way to do it. What else? 1080p, 120 frames per second. Uh, that's probably gonna be pretty pretty much okay. Uh, one important thing to note is that uh, there is a dual pixel autofocus limit for the 1DX Mark III. And it, it says here that the dual pixel autofocus doesn't work in 4K, 50, 4K, 60 uncropped modes and 5.5K raw 60p for video. So I don't know if that's a 50 60p limitation, processor limitation, or if it's a sensor resolution thing. Uh, maybe at 30p, it's not a problem. 8K 30, as we've been talking about. At the very worst, uh, so if we have a cropped version, that 1.1 crop of 8K, uh, you might have to go to that to be able to have dual pixel autofocus. Uh, it looks like the scaling, uh, the oversampling and scaling or using the full sensor, especially at 60p, dual pixel autofocus doesn't work. Like I said, I don't know if 30p works or not, but we'll, we'll find out. Another interesting limitation of the 1DX Mark III is the uh, requirement to shoot Canon Log in 10-bit. And if you disable Canon Log, uh, you drop back down to 8-bit. I don't know if this is a technical limitation or if it's just something that we're going to be seeing on the R5 as well. Uh, if you want to read it more in detail on um, all of the all of the specifics, I really suggest taking a look at the 1DX Mark III white paper. It goes into a lot of details about just how things work and why things are the way they are. I'll make sure to link in the description down below. And like I said, I totally expect the R5 to function pretty much the exact same way as the white paper suggests. Now, I want to take a look at, uh, one last look at the rumored specifications and see uh, if there's anything else left to talk about. So uh, it's rumored 8K 30, 4K 120. If everything I said about 8K is possible, uh, 8K 30 is possible, then 4K 120 you know, is, is just a quarter of the processing power or whatever. So 4K 120 uh, with probably the very similar limitations as 8K, it, be it um, a dual pixel autofocus or whatever. Uh, those limitations are probably going to be pretty similar. Uh, what else? 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Uh, that's pretty standard. Uh, or or th that's pretty reasonable. New battery. Okay, that's pretty reasonable. Launch in July of 2020. Yeah, so uh, that's about right. About right. Plus four, four and a half months. We're going to be in, in June, July. Now, I'm sure we're going to get a lot more details uh, about this camera in the coming weeks and months especially with CP Plus coming later this month. Um, I don't know if we're, people are gonna be able to actually get their hands on this camera, but certainly in the next couple months, people you know, should be able to get there uh, to play around with it. 
So yeah, I actually created these drawings for myself just to be able to wrap my head around, you know, the resolutions, the codecs, the bandwidths, and all that stuff. Uh, and since I had already created it, I figured I might as well share it with you guys. And if you guys agree or like what you saw, make sure to hit that like button. And if you disagree or have some other thoughts, make sure to comment down in the section down below uh, and we can have a discussion on what you think might be the case with this camera. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be picking this camera up, the R5 up for, uh, you know, for, for, for my YouTube channel. So uh, I haven't figured out what I wanna do with the C200, C200, R5, uh, 4K, 8K. I'm gonna have to give it some more thought, but you're most likely gonna be seeing that camera on this channel. So uh, make sure to stay tuned. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.